did it. That's the that. Yo, BC, we got breaking news. Call the guys, scrap the show. We got to redo. Well, right, wait, wait, man. What we... There's some, there was something going on in here, man. Let's see a couple of these things I got to get for the year, man. Yeah, BC one. Yo. Hey, yo, Tanner, what you doing, bro? I'm just looking at some hats for the year, man. I got to get a couple more, you know, for for the show. You know how I do it. Hey, hey listen, man, I hate to do this to you, bro. I just found out we got breaking news. You got to come in the studio. Oh, well, you know, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't that far. I, I'll be there in a second, man. Say less. All right, man, appreciate you. All right, baby, baby. I'm going to call everybody else, baby, baby. 95, 96, 97, Yeah, hey, what's up? LP, hey, yo, yo, we need you, man. All right, listen, listen. I don't know what you're doing. It's not like you in the weight room, but I need you to get to the studio. We got breaking news, bro. So, all right, we got the whole crew coming in. We need you. Right now? All right, I'm on my way. I'll see you in a second. 98, 99, 100. All right, let's go. This boy Fred up here. Boy, Lord knows what Fred out here doing. Fred, what's up, BH? Fred, hey, bro, listen, man, drop what you doing. We need you to come into the studio. Do what? Ryan said there's breaking news. I don't know what's happening. We need you to come in. Come on, man, I'm here. So wait the same thing you wore yesterday. All right, I'll be there. All right, all right, babe. See you soon. Get ready to go too. Man, the show going. What am I doing here on my yeah, day? Yeah, what are you doing? All I was You're told was to, to call y'all and get here too. I had to go get my clothes. Yo, so I don't know what's I going on. Told. I was told oh, this is. Okay. <laughs> I was told this is a good spot to you know potentially make some sort of announcement. Oh, oh, oh well, yeah. What okay. do you have to say, Mr. Wade? Uh -huh. I'll start right now. Center presented by Seeky, the official primary ticket partner of the Washington Commanders. Brian Cobra Jr. here with Santana Moss, Fred Smoot, Logan Paulson, and we have a special guest. Tress Way, yeah. our star yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. And, and my guy, you said that you have an announcement. Now you've never been on Command Center before, so yeah. this, is, this is a special this occasion. Is yeah. 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 I, I hope you brought us here for a good reason. Uh, yeah, I, th I think so. You know, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was just kind of noticing, you know, like a lot of excitement, a lot of things building around the building, and mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't help but notice our first round pick. I mean, he sported a certain number through college. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, you're gonna, you gonna bless them with it. Then. Well, a lot of people have been asking, and I just thought maybe it was a good place to make an announcement. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm give them five. Oh, I'm gonna give them five. That's very nice of you. Now, now the big question. Do you know what number you're going to wear? So, yeah, no, that's, a great, that's a great question. So, you know, uh, my son, Bo, uh, he's got a five jersey, and he also has two other jerseys. He's got 39 for Revo and 17 for Terry. So maybe I could go after one of their jerseys. <laughs> and, you know, like, and just kind of be like, hey, hey, we'll <laughs> my son's already got the jersey. He's got that number. I can just duct tape it on the back. Right. Uh, and then also, too, I was thinking about talking to uh, Cleland and saying, hey, man, you know, there's a whole lot of 99 Chase Young jerseys out there. What if I go 99 everybody throws way on the back? <laughs> Now there's what, a ton of trust. what I say. I say it. I say it. I say it. I just go 99. Left field on them. Just go hockey on them. Yeah. Go 99. Yeah. But, uh, man, DQ and AP, they, you guys, I cannot stress how cool they have been through everything. Yeah. And they just said, hey, no pressure right now. Like, you can just kind of ease into it. This is, man, it's been heavy on my heart, no, heavy I mean, on my head. Yeah. I can't tell you the talks, the prayers, the tears, the laughs, the everything. And so I'm going to take my time. I, I think uh, I think I'm just going to sport a number through OTAs and training yeah. camp <laughs> yeah. and then just kind of continue to think about it. I will be odd number come week one, but I don't yeah. know what it is yet. So, yeah. so my, thing is, my thing is just, yeah. just talking about it, like being a veteran, yeah. being a guy that being one of my pro bowlers yeah. here, um, I mean, just what you've done throughout the years, did that ever kind of come to you and say, man, I, I, I've done so much in this number. Yeah. Should I even consider it? Yeah. You know yeah. Yeah. See, Santana's going to be the one that's going to make me emotional. <laughs> yeah. but, Let it out! Yeah. Let it out. So, uh, yeah, so, man, I just, I think about, think about the first time I came and 
Why did I do that? See, man, man, nah, it's yeah, all good, man. It's what's your thing? We played we play together, man. <laughs> we, we played together. No, no, no man. And I, I was, I was one with Chicago. Yeah. I just, I didn't yeah. like it. Yeah. I was, I got there. They gave me one, and I got picked up here, on the waiver wire. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time, first time I felt wanted. Like yeah. it was like, hey, yeah. like they picked me. Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. I came in. Five was sitting there, and I was like, yeah. I was like, I like that. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So, it just kind of, whoo, man, this is harder than I thought. Yeah, it's um, all good, man. But uh, I think about, I was talking to my wife, and I've been fortunate enough to have been voted team captain four times. Mm-hmm. And if I get voted captain again in my career, that C gets filled in. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, it's going to be weird if I give up the number. The first time I get that C filled in, it's going to be a different number. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and my wife said, why do you have the C, like, in the first place? Like, mm, yeah. what yeah. gives you the C? And full disclosure, I told him no right out the gate. I was like, hey, I'm keeping five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got feel you. And it just yeah. didn't sit well. And I talked to, talked to AP, talked to DQ, and yeah. they were just so cool about it. And I was like, guys, I don't feel good about it. I, I just feel like there's just so much excitement around this organization hands down the most I have ever seen Mm -hmm. like just all of the excitement building and building and building and I just feel like this is this is just a small a very small part that Mm -hmm. I could do got a rookie coming in can't imagine what's going on in his head Mm -hmm. and his heart and uh you know I'm there for him on fourth down if we have to give the ball away but maybe (laughs) this is an example I could show him hey I'm here for you now too yeah yeah yeah. but yeah so We'll uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, that's uh, why you the guy who you are. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, honestly, I appreciate like, you. Yeah. You yeah. one of those guys that hey man, I'm doing this for the team. Yeah. I'm not doing this for my own self. Yeah. Saying that yeah. hey, because yeah. I, I can trust me, I feel you. But I yeah. like we we had a discussion about it yesterday, and I was saying. You know, maybe you give them, hey, man, I'm going to make you spin a little something. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, bag a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to make you dig a little bit. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a quarterback. He's going to have it. So, you know, yeah. we, we play with different numbers and stuff. So, whatever you, you know what I'm saying, you come up with as far as the number. Whatever I fun know. way you find out how you want to do the swap, yeah, you know we behind you, brother. But I, know, I, thank I, you. I appreciate you doing yeah. what you considered was right. Yeah, yes. I, uh, you know, looking out, and it's just so surreal. You guys have to understand how fun it is for me that this is even a thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm the punter for a franchise, mm-hmm. and we're talking about like the number and if I'm gonna give it up or not. And I'm just so thankful for how I've been viewed or who I've been in the locker room. But the just the things that matter to me. And like the the guy I, the guy I try to be the guy I want to be where I want like my identity found like mm-hmm. I mean I I want my identity found in Christ and loving other people serving other people and it is a very hu- big piece of humble pie to give up yeah. this number yeah. 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 but yeah. I feel like it's a bite I should take either way I feel like it's the right thing and you know I've come up with a couple cool ideas that we could do I, yeah. I'm not my, my wife and I talked I'm not about the whole cash deal or yeah. buy, yeah. buying a number oh, off yeah. a guy yeah. Yeah. but I came I came up with some fun ideas okay. yeah. I, I got one for you yeah how about the your, your charity because I know you're big in charity yeah and I know you have uh, things you do how about you say hey I need you to have at least four appearances in the next year. Now we're talking. Charity, that's right? that's uh, not bad. Yeah, that, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Because you know, as players, we superstitious a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. And, and, that's, a and little I want to know, like, yeah. we all superstitious. Because yeah. I remember when I changed from 21, then I came back here and I was 27, I started like, uh, it feels good, but it, it, mm-hmm. it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I want to know that first punt in that new number. I know. If it doesn't go the way you want to, are you going to be like, mm, I should have kept my pie? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think if anything, he's doing me a favor because that way, if I ever shank a punt, I'd be like, man, this is your fault. Right? I was like, everybody's booing me, but it is your fault. No, but I, I was thinking of just some fun. So, like, now me me being a proud Sooner and we're yeah. in the SEC now, yeah. I was like, hey, man, how about how about we throw in some tickets to LSU, Oklahoma? Oh, there you go. All right. And me and my buddies go down and we watch the Tigers play the Sooners. Yeah. You know, well, welcome do, to the yeah. SEC, my yeah, friend. Yeah, you know? Welcome to the SEC. And then, and then something that I think would be really fun, I told him, I was just like, hey, man, I was like, we got to go on to Fanatics. Yeah. And I was like, I want part of this whole exchange deal mm-hmm. trade. Yeah. I was like, I want you, whatever my number ends up being, I want you to go on. And so we'll have to work with the team here to mm-hmm. get people to submit like mm-hmm. their jersey, them wearing their jersey, especially yeah. if I've signed it at some mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Right. I want to sign the new jersey, new number, yeah. and, and wow. Jane would be getting it for him. And then I get to mail it out to That's him, cool. write him a little something. That's and I, I would I just want I want that. I want yeah. that to be yeah. the vibe. And yeah. you know, like I'd love to love to take the family on a vacation and golf a little bit. <laughs> 
Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Send the wife to the spa, maybe. Just yeah. have yeah. fun. Yeah. Experience. Yeah. Experience yeah. stuff. Well, whatever so, yeah. number it is, I'm buying it. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to wait on the show. No, we part of that fanatics deal. There you go. There you go. Give me a new trust, Jane. Well, Tress, regardless of number, what you've done here will never be forgotten. Yeah. It's yeah. appreciated. You are mm -hmm. loved. Yeah, you are you. a fan favorite. Thank so thank you. you so much for your candidness. Thank you much for your openness. And mm -hmm. thank you so much for you know giving our new rookie a new number. Man. That's you right. Yeah. We appreciate that a lot. Appreciate and, um, you guys. Last question for you because yeah. we know the rookies are in the building. That's what this show is all about. But yeah. the rookie mini camp. Yeah. You've been here, done that, man. Yeah. You've been here and had an extensive career. Yeah. How do these rookies do the same thing that you did? Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, rookie minicamp, it'll be good because it'll just be all the rookies. Yeah. So you got nothing going on. You yeah. got to listen to the coaches. And then once all the vets come in, uh, whenever I was a rookie in Chicago, I had a great veteran tell me, be seen, not heard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just sit yeah. there. And it seems like it's taken forever, but you look back and rookie year goes like that. Yeah. Yeah. You just stay right there. You stay in your lane. You follow everybody else's lead. And I mean, talk about the leaders we have here now. Yeah. And so I was like, just follow in line. And then year two, now you're starting to have more expectations and step out a little bit, yeah. be seen, not heard. Yeah. There you go. Man. I don't think it gets better than that than hearing from a legend like yourself. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully when you do pick your number, you come back and kick it with us. It was nice to have like you that. on yeah. command. Yeah. It was nice yeah. to get legends to give some advice. You know, we have another legend named Joe Theismann that has some things to say about our new quarterback. Let's take a listen. And I, I think in Jaden's case, he brings an awful lot to the table. He brings experience. Um, I, like the, I like the way he physically plays the game. I like his footwork. I like his release. I like his accuracy. I like his athleticism. The first name that comes to mind, and this was a kid that was drafted last year, was C.J. Stroud. I think Jaden sort of fits into that category where he runs well enough to be able to keep himself safe and protect himself and to be able to threaten defenses, throws the ball well enough to be able to make people pay attention to it and be careful because they can't load the line of scrimmage and just think that he's a runner. And he brings a lot of versatility. And he, you know, Brian Kelly, I, I knew Brian at Notre Dame very close. And, um, you know, obviously you've got a Heisman Trophy winner. You've got somebody with a ton of talent, somebody who's actually transferred different systems. Now, some people might say, well, he went from Arizona State to LSU. Well, to be honest with you, I think that's a, a plus because you're coming to the NFL and now you're going to have to learn another system. So it isn't like he spent six years or five years in the same place, same system, same terminology. Now he's going to have to adapt and learn again. And obviously he's proven that he can do it at a very high level. But I liked everything about him. And if he wasn't the choice, I would have been very, very surprised. Now, no, no, but Jaden has me feeling pretty lucky after getting a comparison like that. And I'm sure Commanders fans would love to see it. And speaking of luck, it's time to look at our off-season lucky numbers presented by Maryland Lottery Fast Play Games. Play fast, win fast today, but please play responsibly. The off-season calendar is starting to heat up. Let's take a look at some of the big dates. Now, rookie mini camp will be May 10th through the 12th. Off-season training activities begin May 14th, and off-season training activities end June 7th. Then there's mini camp June 11th through the 13th, and of course, training camp on the horizon for later this summer. Fellas, over 20 rookies pulling up and yeah. looking to make a name for themselves. So let's get into everything rookie mini camp. Logan, how important are these rookie mini camps for these new guys? I think it's really important. I think this structure is going to be a little bit different than what it's been the past couple of years. It's going to be a smaller group, kind of rookies focused. Yeah. You know, in the years past, it's been like we're going to have a full offense, full defense. We're yeah. going to practice, see the throws. No, it's going to be a small group. We're going to. Have, this is where we meet. This is how we practice. This is who your coaches kind of lay the foundation. But to your point, I think it's going to be an awesome opportunity to kind of establish some of those work habits, and kind of show the direction that. That we, all these leadership qualities we, the guy brought in have and the direction they want this group to go. So, And Tana, you kind of have some familiarity with yeah. that kind of rookie man because you've yeah. been in where you're not only a new rookie coming in, yeah. but there's a whole new regime coming in as well. Well, to his point, uh, when I was a rookie, it was a new staff also. Yeah. Herman mm -hmm. was had just got the job, so I was their first you know, first overall pick in New York. And um, But I didn't have to co just come in there with rookies. I was in there with all the yeah, vets yeah. also. Yeah, so yeah. it was a totally different experience for me. And trust me, they wanted to see stuff right now. So they was throwing me in a fight. But I think one of the things that was most important is just seeing how can you handle some of the verbiage of different, you know, plays and all the stuff that you probably had an experience before in college, but now you're getting it on this level. And to that point, like, I remember my rookie minicamp, we had a practice in the morning, then practice with the team, then practice. It was just so much information you couldn't really settle in and kind of identify, like, 
what you needed to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think this this structure just allows you to kind of take a breath. Yeah. Hey, man, this is your first NFL practice. Be at ease a little yeah, bit. Yeah, slow it in for the big practice which starts next week. Yeah, and Fred, all the yeah. structure's a little different. Yeah. You still want to stand out. Yeah. And you was a player that knew how Always to stand out. out. Always stand out. out. <laughs> <laughs> so what advice would you give these fellas on how they can stand out early in this minicamp? Uh, they need to get there early and leave late. Mm -hmm. First of all, yeah. you start with yeah. your attendance. All right, then it starts with availability. Always be available. Cross your T's, dot your I's. Understand the situation. And when you do get a chance to be on the field and get those reps, and you do get a chance to make a play, don't be afraid to let them know you made that play. Mm -hmm. right, at the end of the day, <laughs> especially if you're an undrafted free agent or somebody that's not going to get as many reps as the other guys, you have to make sure when you make those plays, they know who made that play. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be mad to do that. It is not only making plays, you're learning, right? And yeah. what's cool about these rookies is they're coming into some rooms with some savvy veterans. Yeah, they did yeah. a really good job of free agency bringing in these veteran guys. Let's talk about some of these rookies and how they fit in some of these rooms. Tanner, I'm going to start with yeah. you. Yeah. Well, one of the things that, you know, that I'm going to be looking at, you know, is the tight end room. Yeah, you have, a, you yeah. have a key guy who, who we all was, you know, high on when we heard that we picked up Ben Sanat. Yeah, yeah. You like to say Sinat. his name as well. Sin it. Sin it. <laughs> you know, but just yeah. knowing what yeah. they have already. You yeah. know, you got Zach Ertz, you yeah. have Bates, yeah. you have all those other guys, you have Turner, who we've yeah. been Cole waiting on until he goes. So I just want to yeah. see I'm how ready, yep. he will get in that room and where does he fit at? Is he the guy that's going to be immediately thrown into the thrust or, or being out there, you know, as a, almost every down, you know, tight end? Or will he have to take his role like some of the other guys have? And like you pointed out, you pointed out all those names. There's a lot of unproven guys. Yeah, you yeah. have that veteran Zach Ertz, but I have yeah. a lot of guys that are hungry to get to it. Logan. What rookie would you say fits in these rooms? Yeah, so for me, it's like an, an interesting room is the receiver room because yeah. of the addition of Luke McCaffrey. Obviously, yeah. a guy that kind of changes the direction that that slot position is going. He's more of a big slot. He's 6'2", he's 200 pounds. He's going to block. He's going to make the tough contested to catches. Does that indicate a change in the room? And if it does, does that favor a guy like Bryson Tremaine or Jack Saint, the, the undrafted free agent from Georgia, guys that are going to do the dirty work? I don't know. I think the top three, top two are pretty established in terms of Jahan and Terry. But I think that... That signing, that drafting, makes that whole room really, really interesting to watch, and I can't wait to watch those young guys kind of make a, make a case that they should be, be, be in that in that starting rotation. Mm -hmm. And Fred, if I had to make a guess, yeah, I'm gonna assume you're gonna talk defensive back room. The only room that matters. <laughs> <laughs> the only room that matters, and most definitely with a guy like Mike Sanders still coming in, a guy that can a jack of all trades, a guy that can. Just put me here, put me here, wherever you need me to play, coach, I can play. But Dominique Hampton is a guy that I think people are going to fall in love with. 6'3", 225 pounds, can get it done, can play the middle of the field, can go down and play some some, some big nickel, whatever mm -hmm. you need him to do. But I think that's a young room in itself when you talk about Emmanuel Forbes and the rest of those guys. So, yes, it's going to be some vets, but they still got a lot of youth in that room. So these guys get a chance to grow together. Fellas, like I said, 20 different rookies yeah. will be here. Now, let's take a look at that full list of rookies. It is no secret we added a lot of firepower throughout our 2024 draft, getting our quarterback early and adding playmakers on both sides of the ball. No surprise why this draft class was so highly regarded around the league, but we also added some quality talent when it comes to undrafted free agents. If there's one thing that's for certain about all of these young fellas, they are some dogs. Welcoming in the captain, London Fletcher, into command center. London, how you doing, bro? It's rookie mini camp, man. How excited are you to see these rookies come out here and hit this field? I'm very excited to see, you know, our rookies. Um, first opportunity to see this draft class. Obviously, all eyes will be on Jaden Daniels, first and foremost. We want to see what he looks like. But then, you know, want to see Johnny Newton and, and some of the other draft picks as well. Me being an undrafted guy, I'm watching to see which undrafted free agents stick out because there will be some guys that, you know, you look at maybe we had a, a six round grade on a guy or a seven round grade on a guy and he ended up being uh, going undrafted. There will be some guys that flash and show potential during this, during this mini cap that were undrafted. So, but it's a great opportunity to see these guys first opportunity to see them uh, in commander's uniform and see how they get acclimated to our system. Fletch, man, I'm a little disappointed you didn't talk about the linebacker we drafted, Jordan McGee, man. I love how he runs. I love how he diagnoses stuff. I love how he is in coverage, but you're the linebacker expert, man. Let's talk about him a little bit. What are your thoughts on him and his role for the upcoming season? Yeah, Jordan McGee, um, didn't know a ton about him prior to us drafting him. Once we made that pick, I was able to go back, watch a ton of his film, see what he looks like at Temple. As you mentioned, the first thing that, steps that jumps out is his ability to run sideline to sideline make plays. He's, a, he's an outstanding off-ball linebacker, one that um, you know when you see his athleticism, you know right away he'll be able to add to the special teams aspect, covering kicks and things like that, especially with the new 
kickoff rules, kickoff uh, return rules, he I can see him making an impact on on special teams right away. As far as his ability, you said, you talk about playing the pass. That seems like where he thrives the most. Um, in today's NFL, it's all about being able to cover in space, being able to cover tight ends. So I think he'll excel in that. As far as a take on linebacker, want to see him, you know, maybe being a little bit more physical at the point of attack. But they got a great linebacker coach in, in Ken Norton Jr. I'm sure he'll get him up to speed and, and, and coach, him, coach him up on techniques as far as taking on blockers a little bit better. While we're talking about linebackers, I might as well keep it there. We talked so much about that last season, about seeing that group improve. What do you say right now going into this mini camp? How much better did that 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 room get? I mean, I think if you ask me, it has to be our strongest position or our strongest core on the defense right now leading into this camp. Yeah, well, you can see just with the the moves they made right out the gate in free agency, going out and signing Frankie Luvo, a really underrated linebacker who was playing down here in Carolina with the Carolina Panthers. Explosive, can run, can hit. Really good blitzer, um, somebody that, that's going to have an impact. And then you go out and you, you sign future Hall of Famer and first ballot Hall of Famer and Bobby Wagner, a guy that I'm very familiar with, a guy who's, uh, you know, we've already developed a relationship even when he was playing for the Seattle Seahawks. You bring great leadership, but also with Bobby, you bring playmaking ability at the middle linebacker position. And that was something that we were, quite frankly, lacking, having a playmaking middle linebacker at the uh, in the middle of our defense for quite some t some time so i'm uh, very for much looking forward to to those two guys the question i ask or have is where does Jamin davis kind of fit in the mix of, with all this because if you know most of the time they're only playing two linebackers a lot of the time so how much of a role would Jamin davis have will they utilize him maybe as a as a as a fifth rusher off the edge and some of the different packages um so really looking forward to see how they put um, work those three guys together in, in this year's defense. London, you brought that up, the fact that you were undrafted free agents. And, of course, you know we're bringing in these guys for camp right now, and it's a lot of these guys with a lot of talent. If you had one thing to tell these guys as a guy that made it through that process and on the other end of it, what would you tell those guys? It, what's the important thing you would tell them when it comes to making this team? Well, first and foremost, the easiest way – for an undrafted guy to make an NFL ball club is special teams. And for some of these guys, they may not have a lot of experience playing special teams, especially if they were, you know, a star player for their for their college. A lot of the stars or frontline players don't play special teams. But when you're a guy trying to make a ball club, the easiest way, you need to be in that special teams coach hip, hip pocket, trying to learn as much as possible, trying to execute the techniques as much as pop possible, and really showing that you can can serve a role on special teams. And then once you do that, your opportunities to to make plays on the whether it's base offense or base defense or things like that, those will come. But first and foremost, embrace the challenge of trying to be the best special teams player you can be. And London, we love that advice. So before we let you go, I have to ask you about our new rookie quarterback. Now on the gridiron, you're one of the best leaders we have ever seen. How can Jaden Daniels come into this locker room and establish himself as a leader early? First and foremost, just having interviewed him during the um, after he got drafted, he has the right temperament, very humble, but you also can, you can feel his confidence. For him, he doesn't have to come in trying to prove, hey, I'm the Heisman Trophy, I'm the number one, number two pick, I'm the face of the franchise. He doesn't have to come in and try to be that. He has to come in, first and foremost, try to learn the playbook as quickly as possible, be the best version of himself day in and day out, not try to you know, anoint himself as a leader, earn that respect, earn his teammates' respect with his worth ethic and how he approaches the game on a day-in and day-out basis. He does that. He'll naturally become a leader because of, uh, you know, what I've seen so far, obviously what he accomplished at LSU and Arizona State, but also just in talking to him after we, uh, when we interviewed him after he got drafted by us. Big London, man, always a pleasure to have you on the show, man. When's the next time you're going to be in the studio, man? We miss you. We don't. You know, I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to debut uh, up there next week. I okay. think I might come in the building. <laughs> you, you know Fred miss you more than anybody. It's been a pleasure, man. We appreciate your time and your game, brother. And until next time, maybe we'll see you next week. All right, bro. All right. Thanks, Fletch. All right, brother. Nice neck beard. <laughs> Why do you got the fat ass pants on? <laughs>
<laughs> we definitely got to help Fred with his swag. But someone who needs no help in that department is our second overall pick. Jaden Daniels is used to etching his name in the history books, not only being named a national champion and a Heisman winner, but also the second overall pick. Daniels says he's ready to get it started here in Washington, but nothing speaks quite like the tape. So let's check it out. Welcome to DC. What I loved about Adam's press conference last night, he what he liked about you, he says you take the soul away from a defense. In your perspective, what does that look like when Jaden Daniels takes the soul away from a defense? Uh, 2023 Florida game. You cannot place a ball any better than that. Jay Daniels is something special. Jay Daniels off to the races. He takes it to the house. 85 yards for Daniels. Can, can you elaborate? <laughs> uh, just turn on the tape and watch that game. He is different, man. All right, people talking about Jaden Daniels taking the soul of defenses. He says, go watch the Florida game. And mm -hmm. I say, man, that dude was a dog The in this film game. don't lie. We're not going to watch that whole game because we'd be here for three hours, but yeah. we'll watch a couple of plays. So first off, let's start with the zone read. Fred, anytime you got a running quarterback, yeah. you can isolate aspects of the defense. Yes, right? you can. And so with a zone read, we're reading the defensive end. We're basically saying the mesh is going to block him. And when you have a dangerous playmaker yep. mm -hmm. like Jaden Daniels that can hurt you with his legs, this is the result. This is maybe his Heisman run. Bad angle by this safety here, oh, but yeah. speed will do that to you, right? Yeah, yeah. When you're fast, you break angles, and we got to just walk out on some people, right? Yeah. Ah, 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 right? Go, go, left, gag right, you. left, right, Lace. left, right. And we're getting out there, right? And so yeah, this is when you have a quarterback that can find explosives like this, yep. it's pretty devastating. So not only can you have a design running game for him, yep. he can scramble and create stuff off schedule. And Fred, you always talk about two man. Right? And how that's great for stopping passes, right? Yes, it is. But when you have a running quarterback. You have to take it out of the playbook because you never want us cornerbacks to turn our back mm -hmm. on a running quarterback. And so watch as these guys go. They're going to turn their back to the quarterback. Uh, wrong decision. The pass concepts dead. Yep. And we have a creative guy in the backfield here that everyone, everyone compares him to RG3. Yeah. I see a more athletic kind of creative runner. Like yeah. putting the foot in the ground there, Tanner, right? Yeah. That's yeah. a little different. That's a lot different. It's just a change of direction, the, the ability to stop and start. So that means he's not only fast, he's also quick. Yeah. And, and everybody that's fast is not always quick. And I'm, then you got to also say, too, most guys who have that straight line, B-line sp speed can't put their foot in the ground yeah. like that. You yeah. know, RG was extremely fast, yeah. but he yeah. did, we, we didn't always see those kind of cuts from him. Yeah, and so that's – so he says, watch the Florida game, I take the solo defenses. To me, he takes the solo defenses because he knows what he's doing yep. as a passer. Yeah. So what you're going to get here from, uh, from Arkansas here is you're going to get a nickel pressure, right? So wash my guy's eyes real quick, right? He's going to say, I know what's coming. You see, look at the nickel pressure. Mm -hmm. I need yep. to accelerate my feet. Watch his footwork, right? Sees the pressure, accelerates his feet, knows where the hot route is across the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. This guy's a little bit late, buys a half step, gets that ball out for a touchdown. Quick right? release That's right there. That's knowing what the defense is doing ahead of time, and right? And that's something that they told him that, you know, the first year that he was there at LSU that he needed to work on. So yeah. they say he did a lot of that in the offseason and came back, looked a lot better his last year there. And this is high-level stuff, man. Know yes. what the defense is doing. How do how, – what – what part of the concept protects me? Let's get the ball out to one of our best playmakers and make that happen, right? Easy Good, money. clean feet. Love Absolutely. the feet work. And again, watch his eyes. Watch his eyes. He's going to look over here to the offensive uh, offensive right. Yep. Vision cone this way. Watch this safety say, oh, I have to match this guy down the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. He's holding him there. He says, all right, I know what's up. It's cover three. Let me hit this backside. Ten, mm -hmm. ten is ready yeah, to go. Yeah, 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 ready yeah, to go. Yeah. And we're just gonna zip this sucker in there. Put it in there. I mean, Ooh. that's that's high level ball, right? That's, that's twenty five yards on a line. Yeah. So everyone talks about, oh, mm. how is he as a runner? How is yeah. he as an athlete? I look at this stuff. And I think this is the stuff yes. that makes him the second best quarterback, maybe mm -hmm. the best that's quarterback in the yeah. yeah. perspective, because of this type of stuff, right? Ability to man manipulate defenses, understand where the concept's gonna let, let me be successful, and getting the ball to my playmaker. Quick Balls like too. that beat DBs every time mm -hmm. because. He's not. It, it, it's, when I say on the line, I don't yeah. think people understand. This stride. ball is not going up and, and down. Up and down. Then right it's here. not no wasted motion in there. That's a tight throw through a tight wonder. Hitting that wide receiver in stride because mm -hmm. that wide receiver had to slow up. Yeah. It gives me a chance to come run him down. Absolutely. And uh, the other thing I love about it too is just again when it's not there, the the, the second reaction throws. Yes. Yeah. And everyone talks about oh footwork, whatever. Like this is what this gives you, right? Over here, the concept to the left is dead. This, this flat player does a good job of pushing through mm -hmm. to the hitch. He says, let me get my footwork locked in, reset. Bam. Dude, how many times have you seen Drew Brees hit this throw, right? Yeah. Yeah. This backside dig, 
and the timing and anticipating, knowing the space, knowing that this player is going to attach to the back, understanding windows, get that ball in there. That oh. all starts because of his feet. Yes. Right? yes. All starts because of his feet in the pocket. Deliver this down the middle. Great play right there. Now, Great most, play. Hey. Love to see it. And then against maybe one of the best defenses in college football, you get this, right? Where it's Alabama, they're running. What are they running here? I don't know. They're running some type of cover six, quarters yeah. maybe, right? Yep. I don't know, Fred. This looks like maybe quarters to me. Maybe right? With that quarters. Shorter cell. We got half player here. We got a flat player on the far side. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? But understanding how to manipulate flat players. Look at his eyes, right? We're always talking about his eyes here, right? He's looking to the flat, yeah. which is really going to be a wheel here. Get that hook player out of the throwing window. Get him out of the throwing window. There we go. To pulling a fletch right there. Yep. And then we're going to hit this dig. But great job by the by the quarters player. Yeah. Rally well, this, Tanner. Yeah, yeah. And I think this should be a pick, but ball placement, Tanner. You said this. Ball placement. Look at this thing. Sitting him down. Yeah. He, he understood where the leverage was at by that defensive back and said, I want to make sure I give my guy a chance to snap down, get out of it, catch the ball, and hey, maybe possibly score. Uh, he scores on this, man. Yeah, and yeah. again, that's because the ball placement, understanding the coverage, manipulating the underneath defender with his eyes. So I say it's because his footwork's tight in the pocket. Yep. He's got that nice, tight delivery. You mentioned that, Fred, Yeah, right? the delivery is in there. And yep. he's got a little bit of little variation in the throw. So yep. even though he didn't do a lot of different stuff at LSU, I think his footwork lets him get there, couple that with his eyes. Man, I'm super juiced about what this guy can bring. Yeah, me too. I can't wait to see it. Burger yep. and go. And Brian, what do you got for us? Thank you, fellas. For more on That Kid Jaden, head over to commanders.com where our senior staff writer, Zach Selby, is giving you all you need to know about our draft prospects. In his Five Things series, you can learn all about this commander's grade A draft class. Check it out now, and new articles are dropping weekly. We are learning all about this draft class, but on Free Agency Fridays, you can learn about our new free agents. This week, we had veteran running back Austin Eckler. Check it out. What's good, Commanders family? Brian Cooper Jr. And this is Free Agency Friday. And I'm very honored to welcome in our next guest, our new running back, Austin Eckler. Austin, you've mentioned Brian Robson Jr. Yeah. And how excited you are to play with him and how you feel like you're the perfect fit for B-Rob. Why is that? Expound on that a little bit and just talk about how excited you are to play with a guy like B-Rob. Yeah, you know, I, as I look across the league, you know, there's a couple, uh, you know, running back tandems out there that have really been lighting it up. You know, yeah. the, the, I think the most clear one was uh, uh, Jameer Gibbs and yeah. David Montgomery last yeah. year for the Lions. And you see, you see that. You've seen it too with me and Melvin Gordon back in the day you've seen it with Kamara and um, and uh, Ingram. Ingram yep and so you've seen these 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 tandems go off and I, I think we're kind of the same type of backfield when it comes to those tandems where it's like okay you got two guys that are proven they can they can play yeah. but they're two different styles right b Rod, he's a big dude you know he's like 6'2 6'1 you know you know two you know 230 you know you see me I'm 5'8 you know but I'm 200 pounds right? I'm yeah. a little scat I'm jittery I'm hard to tackle I got low center of gravity so we're two different types of backs and so when you have that combination that mixes it up we stay fresh but then we also could play at our fullest and it's it's a difference so they, they're getting used to him we could throw me in now I'm running routes out of the backfield I'm running the wide zone I'm running these different types of run plays that I'm best at um, and now it's giving different looks so it just adds another dynamic to our offense that I'm looking to have and like I said after the games I stay fresh like I feel yeah. good like I remember playing when it was me and Melvin like after the games, I felt good like my body felt amazing I'm like dang like if I can hold on to this feeling because that's this the season's long you know right, by the end right. of the season your legs were Regardless of what position you play, you're going to be heavy. Uh, I don't care if you're on practice squad. Like, you're still putting in the work. Everyone's putting in the work. And so to have that, that little back and forth, I know it's going to help us, you know, be a better offense. Oh, man, we are so excited, man. I got, like, goosebumps. Yeah, man, talk about all go. different combos. Like, yeah, I yeah, see yeah. you and B-Rob being there. Now, before we let you go, our fans are very excited to have you Okay. Here. So okay. they send us questions. They want to know things. And they ask us the tough questions here. Okay, so if you come don't on. Mind, I'd love yeah, to hit you up? with what's a fan up? question. All right. What is the most you have ever bench pressed? Wow. <laughs> That's what y'all want to know? <laughs> well, actually, okay, so the most I've ever bench pressed is 385, which, I mean, that's not... That's all right. I think the most impressive thing that I've probably ever done that like is in the weight room because I'm a big weight room guy. Like yeah. I love being in there. Is uh, I have there's a rep of me. I was doing I did like four one handed pull ups. Um, so if you want to try a challenge to push yourself, try to do even just one, you know, one handed pull up. But uh, yeah, so I love being in the weight room. I love doing the film and stuff like that and just trying to push myself and capture that moment. I have this little challenge for myself right now. Um, it's at, only back in Vegas at this uh, gym called the Dragon's Lair. They have a 200 pound dumbbell. 
and I've been trying to do just one pull up with a 200 pound dumbbell. So Ooh. still things like that that I like to do, you know, just in my <laughs> off time. Cause like I said, I love being in the weight room. So, you know, it's like kind of my, like my happy place where I get to go, you know, kind of mess around and, and have a good time, but also build up the body. Yeah, we love that, man. As soon as we done with this, I'm gonna go try to do myself a one arm yeah, yeah, pull be up careful. and get right. Be careful, yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, this is, hey, I'm not, I'm not, you know, telling you to do this, you know, make sure you take all the precautionary, you know, things you need to do. Stretch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome, man. Thank you so much, man. We can tell how excited you are, man. It's been great yeah. catching up with you. We know you got to get going. We know you are busy, and we can't wait to see you do some more guitar celebrations with that that W on your you chest. See it. There it is. Yes, Bang. sir, man. There we it love is. it. Command this family. This is Free Agency Fridays. <laughs> Remember to leave your comments with questions for these amazing free agents that we have. And until next time, Brian Cobra Jr. here with Austin Eckler. Command this family. See you next Friday. Love getting to catch up with a pro's pro, and his career numbers say it all. In seven seasons with the Chargers, Eckler amassed over 4,300 rushing yards and 39 touchdowns on the ground. He's also proven to be a threat in the passing game with almost 4,000 receiving yards and 30 receiving touchdowns. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm still trying to work on my one arm pull up, however, Seeing these two together is going to be so much fun. And speaking of duos that are fun, let's send it over to my guy Santana Moss and Fred Smooth for Just Chill. It's time for Just Chill, brought to you by Steam Fitters. Just Chill. <laughs> Steam Fitters. UA Local 602 provides the highest HVAC and mechanical piping services. Welcome to another edition of Just Chill. I'm Fred Smooth. Ooh, my yeah. guy Santana Moss. Well, we have these questions that the fans get to ask us and we get to respond back to them. First question. I'm here. From D Perkins, 7495. I like the handle. Mm -hmm. Fred, I love our draft. I'm not sure if we have any day one starters outside of JD. What you talking about, Willis? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> You need to be on just chill. Yeah, Go just get in chill. the refrigerator. You don't know how many. Johnny Newton was a top 30 player in this draft. Yeah. Mike Sanders still one of the best defense backs in the draft. Yeah. And you know I like, should not. Did I say that right? Send it. All right, at the end of the day, we might have four or five starters out of this group. Yeah. Calm down, my friend. We do have day one starters. Yeah. We got to actually let day one hit. I mean, I understand him saying that he don't know. No. Nope. We really don't, don't know. know. We never know. But not to just say that we don't have them. So just chill, buddy. Just chill. All right. What you got for All me, All right, bro? the next one. Uh, Kelly McCall, All 3277. Right. Mm. Is Fred allowed to work <laughs> with the cornerbacks? <laughs> he should be a coach. Forbes would benefit from this, his his mentioning. Like, uh, my thing is, hold on, yeah, let me, yeah. let me, let me, let me say what I have to say <laughs> yeah. about this. First of all, Fred not allowed to do anything with Forbes, <laughs> but sit in this room and yell and scream about the dude. Now, coaching, I won't say that, Fred. Fred has a lot of insight. You do. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I think he was a bright mind on the field. I, I watched you play. I watched your IQ. I think you're a great football mind. But right now, we ain't trying to get out there. That's too much time, no. man. So. Whoever you are, we appreciate you. Yeah. Recognizing Fred and his 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 his, his bright mind yeah. when it comes to football and when it comes to Forbes. But tell no. Fred. No. Just you. No, I ain't gonna do no coaching. We're gonna let Logan do all the coaching. <laughs> he the one wanna do all the coaching. Now what I will do is I have him tip bits, I help him out. If yeah. he needs to know how do I get in this situation, get out of this situation, I will help my fellow guy. Most definitely I will do that. But we ain't coaching. We ain't doing no coaching. Just chill. All right. Next question. We start out with one of my favorite words. All right. All right. All right, Commander fans. And this is from my guy, Johnny Newton. Mm -hmm. He says, what do I need to know? And what do y'all put me on when it comes to the lingo in the DMV? And what are the good food spots in Washington, D.C.? Come on in, fellas. Y'all can help now. us in. Y'all can help us out with this one right here. First of all, the lingo starts with the word J-O-E. Mm -hmm. Joe. You will be called Joe many a times. You don't turn around looking for Joe. Mm -hmm. He's talking to you, Johnny Newton. <laughs> All right, that's what happened. And if you get in the game, you get blocked to death, they're going to be like, no, you Alabama. You're going to be like, no, nah, not the state of Alabama. I'm from Illinois. No, they're telling you, you stink, Bama. my friend. So, yes, that's part of it. Now, food spots. At Ben's Chili Bowl mm -hmm. is First the one how you, that's how you enter the city and become a, a, a part of D.C. Yeah. Then I love steaks. So Maestro's mm -hmm. is one of my favorite steak houses. Tell them Fred sent you. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and that's for D.C. But, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time in Northern yeah. Virginia yeah. area. So yeah. if you're looking for a steak, right on down the street, yep. you can find D.C. Prime. Yes, it is. And if you're in D.C. and you want something outside of the steak realm, you say, hey, I want some fast food. I want something that's going to be for the soul, good yeah. for the soul. Yeah. I would say Honeymoon 
Boom Chicken. Oh, yes. It's a new spot, but it's a good spot. And if you like soul food, who's in Oz? Oh, yeah. If you like Oz. Italian food, Philomena's, Philomena's in, DC, in uh, Georgetown is awesome. Yeah. That's, I don't go out a lot in D.C., but that's one spot I'll go to. All right. I work too much to get out, so I don't have a recommendation, <laughs> but I will tell you, at D.C. Prime, they got like a whole shrine yeah. of Santana Mars. <laughs> now, one thing I'm surprised y'all ain't mentioned, so when I, I'm new to the DMV as well, yeah. and yeah. I got a lot of family out here, so what yeah. they did is they took me out yeah. night on the town yeah. to Rosebud. Oh! Was y'all suggesting of all rookies see, here, Rosebud? I'm just happy you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm happy. Happy. See, let's let them find that by themselves. That's food for the soul. There you that, go. That, that, that's different right there. <laughs> sometimes you need that and sometimes you need more command center. So guess what? We are going to be live Friday from Rookie Minicamp. That's right. All the fellas will be here going mm -hmm. live from what y'all have all been yep. waiting to see Jaden Daniels and the rest of the rookies on that field. And speaking of Jaden Daniels, we've got a lot of advice this episode. Mm -hmm. but we got to give somebody that has like the top of the top advice, yeah. right? And that's quarterback Doug Williams. He had a great message for Jaden Daniels. Let's shake it out to end the show. Washington climbed to the pinnacle of professional football. Left side dives for a touchdown. Hey, my name is Doug Williams, and I too played for this franchise. We was fortunate enough to win three Super Bowls. I was part of the 1988 Super Bowl 22, and I was also named MVP. And I tell you, Playing for Washington, nothing like it. I got one question for you. How do you want to be remembered? Uh, somebody that that's people look up to as a role model and a hero, so uh, that's how I want to be remembered. Somebody that, that made a huge impact in the community. He's giving back, you know, um, giving hope and inspiration to kids that look like me. No matter what, man, I'm, I'm just excited. We'll do whatever it takes to help the team win. Welcome to Washington. Join me as I take a deep dive into the least insulted ticketing app in history, SeatGeek. Did SeatGeek invent the ticket? No, but we do make them work. Drum roll, please. Ooh, how do I use the seat view feature? It shows seats with a pole blocking the view. Don't buy those. What if I want to sit behind a pole? Buy those. Mmm. Join me as I bore you to death with a series of interviews about a ticketing app that just does what it's supposed to do.